Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. Offering public programs and free exhibitions, the SF Art Institute is an ideal spot to view distinctive artwork. Hesse McGraw from SFAI is here to talk about it. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so tell me about the exhibitions and the public programs. So we're part of the San Francisco Art Institute, which is the oldest um, art institution in, sure. in San Francisco. And the exhibitions and pro public programs are, in a way, part of our community of artists mm -hmm. at the Art Institute, but they're also a service to the public. So the exhibitions are, are open, they're free, and public programs, there are weekly lectures and events and performances and they're open and free to the public as well. And you really facilitate that interaction between the artists and students and community. Exactly. It's about, I think, first trusting the artists and mm -hmm. inviting the artists to come to a project that's um, important in the context of their career, but also finding ways in which that really relates to the curricula that we're developing for our student artists, and then also finding ways to really engage the public. And they don't necessarily have to be student artists who, who no. come and and listen, because a lot of the artists will come and they'll do um, lectures, right? Exactly, and the artists that we're inviting are really um, leaders in the field internationally. So they've received MacArthur grants and um, have you know awards of all kinds, and they're really um, people that are pressing contemporary art forward. Sure, so they're big yeah. time. They're big time. They're big yeah. time artists. Yeah. What can you tell me about the Walter and McBean galleries? So the Walter and McBean galleries are our major public presenting space, and it's about a 3,000 square foot gallery. Mm -hmm. And we often commission new work um, or present group shows around an idea, mm -hmm. around a concept. And it's really, um, we're trying to present, you know, the most forward thinking contemporary artists. So people who are really mm -hmm. um, at the leading edge of their discipline or their field. How do you find the artists? It's endless research and travel and um, but how do you narrow it down? Because there are so right. many out there and so many wonderful artists. Yeah. Um, how do you narrow it all down? Is it hard? That's the thrill of it. Yeah. That's, that's the joy of my job, actually. Okay. Yeah. So the upcoming exhibition, tell me about that. So the upcoming show is by an artist named Javier Tellez, who is originally from Venezuela mm -hmm. and now lives in New York. And for 20 years, Javier's work has looked at, um, oftentimes, oftentimes um, individuals who are who are incarcerated and often um, incarcerated through psychiatric illness hmm. so for this project he worked within a prison that had been decommissioned in Portugal and this was a panopticon prison which means a single guard tower um, watching the prisoners in a ring surrounding and he collaborated with outpatients in the prison um, to develop a kind of narrative and a story about what life might be like in that space. And it's, it's um, transfixing. And that's one thing about yeah. art. There's always a story behind yeah. it. Exactly. There's always a story. And I think it's often maybe not what you'd expect mm -hmm. um, or not what you're anticipating. But it changes your assumptions. Um, and it, it alters your perception of the world. Sure. Well, we do have pictures of some of the past shows that we can show. And while we're showing that, uh, well, tell me about this. So the, the rhinoceros alludes to a famous engraving of Durer's rhinoceros. And um, this was a rhino that was actually the first um, rhino to make its way to Europe in the 16th century. It was a gift to the king of Portugal. Um, he immediately regifted it to the to Pope Leo and sent the rhino to Italy. But this became a famous kind of image through Durer's engraving. Sure, that's great. Okay, so this I was excited to hear about this because Diego Rivera, I told you, is one of my favorite artists. And there's a gallery, Diego Rivera Gallery. There is the Diego Rivera Gallery is actually our student exhibition space, mm -hmm. and the cornerstone of that space is a Diego Rivera mural that was commissioned in 1931, which is a stunning mural that represents the building of the city. And this is an image of and the mural. And actually, our students are able to um, exhibit in this space. So often, this is um, one of their first opportunities to show their work publicly. And it really represents them as, as professional artists. And they have to apply for it. They apply for it. It's very competitive. Right. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful space to show it. 
And it doesn't have to be a mural. It, it's anything. No, they do anything Any from video to performance to sound works to paintings. It's well, we were showing that picture of Diego Rivera in the gallery, and that's where the students um, put on their shows as well. He was, he was a little political in his art. Do you see that a lot more now? Do you see of politics course. creeping into art? I mean, I think what's interesting is that artists are able to ask the so big questions of our world and think about those questions in ways that um, are perhaps unexpected. Sure. Um, what's interesting about Diego's mural is that it was covered up for some time mm -hmm. in the in the 40s and 50s, and we now don't know whether that was because representation had gone out of fashion or um, his political bent. But nevertheless, we're very proud of the mural now. Interesting. Well, Hesse, thanks so much for coming by. Thank you. Thank you. And for more information on events and exhibitions at the SF Art Institute, please log on to sfai.edu. Again, that's sfai.edu. Coming up, we'll discuss the Indian Community Center's many initiatives. We'll be right back.